Hello everyone, Charles Watts here, the Arsenal correspondent at Goal, joining you on a big, big day. England versus Germany at Wembley tonight, 5pm kickoff. I think the whole of this country is going to be glued to that one. What a fabulous night of football we had last night as well at the Euros. Just been a wonderful tournament, getting better and better with pretty much each game. Yesterday, absolutely sensational. Spain winning 5-3. And then that huge, huge shock, France going out to Switzerland, Granit Xhaka imperious in that game for the Swiss. And I will get to Xhaka later on in this video. But I thought I'd start on some of the latest sort of Arsenal transfer news, bring you up to speed on kind of where we're at at the moment with Arsenal. And it does look like we're edging towards possibly the first couple of signings in the uh, in the summer transfer window, we'll start with one Nuno, Tava Nuno Tavares. Apologies if I've got that um, pronunciation horribly wrong. I possibly have. Uh, I usually do. Um, but young Ben Fika, left back, 21. The the backup that Arsenal have been looking for for Granite uh, for Granite Xhaka. Got Xhaka on my mind for Kieran Tierney. Obviously, um, looks like it could well be the young Portuguese defender. Arsenal in talks with Ben Fika sources in Portugal and in England confirming this to me in Portugal. Some of the sources I've spoken to suggesting it's very, very close. Sources at Arsenal are uh, maybe trying to temper things a little bit, temper expectations, um, saying it's more, uh, we're not at that sort of stage yet. But from what I'm hearing, it certainly seems like there is growing confidence that this could be a deal that is done. Nothing is agreed yet, nothing signed. So obviously it could all go... It all go wrong. I am told there are other clubs interested in him as well, but Arsenal very much at the front of the queue trying to get this deal done for around £7 million, £6, £7 million. Pounds. Apparently Benfica are trying to get a little bit more out of it, as you would, uh, but Arsenal are hoping to get a deal done at around that price. Um, 21 years old, you know, obviously he's not coming in as first choice left back. We all know that's Kieran Tierney, so it's difficult position to really fill in the transfer window this one because who really wants to come in and play second fiddle to Kieran Tierney that's why you're either going to get yourself someone at the very end of their career who's perhaps happy to sit on the bench and pocket some money not always the best decision to do something like that we've seen it fail with Arsenal before and aging players on fairly big contracts not playing much doesn't really work out um, or you go young like Arsenal done here and maybe you get an up-and-coming player who's it kind of accepts that he's not going to be first choice week in, week out, but you can develop in and improve. And it sounds like he needs a bit of developing. He's very raw. Um, I mean, I know, look, I know next to nothing about him. I've watched a few videos in the last couple of days since finding out that Arsenal are interested in him. Um, but people who have watched him a lot that I've spoken to over in Portugal say he's, you know, he's very raw. He's really, really athletic. That's his major strong, strong point. So quick. Gets up and down the pitch really well. He's good with both feet. So he's right footed or left footed. He has played right back before for Benfica as well. I think he sort of started out as right back almost when he first broke into the team two seasons ago. Um, and now he's been playing more recently at left back. He is left footed, but he's pretty good on his right foot as well. So that's a bonus, especially when we all know Arsenal are looking at sort of backup options or right back options as well um, at the in the window. So maybe he could be an option over there if, if need be at some point. Um, but I'm told he's, he is prone to the odd defensive error. Should fit in pretty well at Arsenal because I think that pretty much sums up every Arsenal defender we've seen for the last five or six years in North London. Um, but at 21, you would expect that. Obviously, he's right at the start of his career. He's he's going to make mistakes at what happens with young players. But there is the potential there, from what I'm told, to be a, you know, a very good player. He's got the attributes, physical attributes, good with both feet, quick. Um, and so you would hope with some good coaching over the next couple of years and you could develop him into a, you know, a, a very talented player. So that's where Arsenal are with him. Nothing done yet as far as I'm aware. Um, not signed, obviously, no medicals, anything like that. It's a case of the clubs at the moment trying to find out the best way to get this deal done that suits all parties. But it feels like there is a bit of a growing belief that this could be one that, that Arsenal do get over the line. Obviously, we know they've been interested in a lot of players so far this window. They haven't managed to get any over the line yet. But it looks like with Tavares that there is an opportunity to get this one done. And that will end Arsenal's long pursuit, really, for a, a natural backup for Kieran Tierney. Uh, need to get Sia Kalasnach out now because obviously he comes back into the squad. So you do have that backup in Kalasnach. But I'm expecting him certainly to go out before the end of the transfer window one way or the other. So that's one done. And then potentially Arsenal might be getting close to another uh, transfer in this window one we've heard all about before Albert Lagonga from and Alex um 
so as far as I'm aware with Legonga, again, it's a similar situation with Tavares. It's still, this isn't something that's been done and agreed, but it is edging that way. There's growing confidence that this is a deal that can be done. It's just a case of still getting these final details with Anderlecht sorted out. There has been talk that there's a second official bid has gone in. I haven't been told that yet, but I'm, um, you know, it, that's not saying it's certainly, it hasn't happened. It, it, it may well have done. I just haven't heard that yet, but um, this bid is apparently a lot closer to what Andalek wants in terms of asking prices. Still got to get the clauses done. You've got to get the exact sort of structure of the deal made up to suit all parties. But it appears that this is one that is edging closer and closer to completion, which will be a big boost to Arsenal because they really like Lugonga. They want to get this one done. Uh, Edu Arteta, they're very keen on him. And um, I see, I've been told when I've been speaking to people about this, that he's very much seen kind of as, as one for the future. But that doesn't mean he's not going to go straight into the first team. When Matteo Guendouzi was signed, he was seen as one for the future, but he went straight into the first team because he impressed so much in pre-season. You know, he's a very, very talented player. Lagonga, you've got to be to be called up into the um, Belgium squad. Yes, he's not made it for the final squad for the Euros, but still he was he's in and around the fringes of it already at just 21 while playing for Anderlecht. And that says an awful lot when you think about the quality of that Belgium squad. So it's just a case now of getting this deal done and getting the exact structure of the deal made up that it suits Anderlecht, that Arsenal are happy with it. Um, you know, personal terms, things like that, that's not going to be an issue from Lagonga. It appears that he definitely wants this move to Arsenal. There is interest from other clubs as well, but he wants Arsenal. And so it's just a case of the two clubs getting this deal done now and nailed down and over the line. And uh, it feels like those two, Tavares and Lagonga, are certainly the ones that could well be happening first when it comes to Arsenal in a transfer window. And they could be getting to the stage of it happening pretty, pretty soon. So fingers crossed for those two. I think everyone will feel a little bit better once they've got a couple of signings through the door and you kind of just feel then, okay, we're into this transfer window now. Arsenal are doing things, they're doing what they want to do, they're getting the players in that they want to get in and they're starting to work because it's felt a little bit slow going so far, hasn't it? I would say a lot of that though is kind of also you've got to put it down to the Euros it's always the case when the international tournament's on it complicates things it holds things up and that might by, might well be why it's not just Arsenal elsewhere across Europe certainly across the Premier League not much is happening there's barely been any deals done um, and I think you've got to look towards the Euros as a as a reason why and there's a perfect example of that is obviously Granit Xhaka who we've been expecting to join Roma it hasn't happened yet but He's going deep into this tournament of Roma and what a performance last night from Granit Xhaka. Switzerland knocked out France. Absolutely brilliant. He was in central midfield. Name man of the match, deservedly so. He was all over the place. Quality on the ball, breaking up plays, passing. It was fantastic. The pass to set up the last minute equaliser to make it 3-3. The pass just after that as well, that uh, nearly made it 4-3. The Switzerland missed a chance there. He was just absolutely fantastic. And I think people, there's been a lot of sort of People were surprised almost by his performance. He sort of listened to the pundits during that um, after the game talking about it, and Roy Keane was saying that he was sensational. But there's always almost that bit of surprise. But I think for a lot of Arsenal fans, and I know he polarises opinion, Granite Xhaka, but you can't look at what he did in the second half last season and not think that Granite Xhaka was good. He was very, very good for Arsenal from Christmas onwards, or basically since the red card against Burnley. Once he came back into the team, he was very, very good. And there's no doubt about it. And I'll argue this till I'm blue in the face that. Um, Arsenal are a much worse side when Granit Xhaka is not in the team. He is a very important player. Yes, he makes mistakes. Yes, and I'm not saying Arsenal can't improve on Granit Xhaka. In fact, I think they can. And I'm I'm actually you know quite open to Arsenal selling Granit Xhaka this summer. I think the time is right to do that and move on and uh, try and improve in that central mid midfield position and bring in a long-term partner for Thomas Partey. But he is a very influential figure at Arsenal and he's very important. When he plays, Arsenal are a better team. It's as simple as that. And I thought last night was a prime example of just how good Granit Xhaka can be when he's on his game, absolutely dialed in, when there's none of those silly errors that we all know Xhaka can make. The one downside last night was he obviously got booked and that's going to mean he's out of the next game. And that is a key thing for Switzerland, a key thing, a real disappointment for Granit Xhaka. Um, but I thought he was great last night and it just... It's a prime example of what's going on with the with the Euros and stopping transfers because we you know we all know Granit Xhaka is very close to moving to Roma. That's something that we're all expecting to happen at some point this summer. But the deal hasn't been agreed yet, and Arsenal will be looking at that performance last night and thinking, "Hold on a minute, should we try and get a few extra million on on top of this deal?" Because it looks like we're giving away an absolute world class midfielder, which on yesterday's performance he certainly looked that good. Now, Arsenal have yet to agree a fee with Roma. 
Roma have been trying to get him on a cheap basically all summer. Arsenal are sort of holding out for around the £18 million mark. Roma haven't hit that yet. There are suggestions over in Italy that Arsenal might reduce that and allow it to happen for about sort of £15 million with add-ons, that sort of thing. I think when you're looking at those performances that he's put in so far in this tournament, and he has been fantastic, Arsenal are in a strong position here. Even if he wants to go, which he pretty clearly does, um, you know, they, they still can't just give him away, especially when he's playing this work this well in a tournament. So it certainly maybe strengthens Arsenal's argument to say to Roma, hold on, you meet our target, which to be fair to Arsenal, from what I understand at the moment, they are doing. They're not just sort of willing to accept what Roma are offering. They're, they're saying, OK, no, we've got a figure, which I believe is around 18 million. And that's what we want you to hear. So Jack was talking after the game yesterday, Evan was asking the reporters, asking about um, things. Someone asked him if he's learning Italian yet. And he said, not yet. And he said, it's always interesting to learn a new language. I learned English. Why not learn Italian? Let's see what happens. Everyone knows what Roma represents today. I'm an Arsenal player. Then I'll decide my future after the Euro. So pretty clear from that as well. It's another example of everything's kind of got hold, held up now because of the Euros. I think, say this was a normal summer, there was no tournament. I think I think Jack would be a Roma player by now. But because of the Euros, everything's on a little bit of hold. And the same situation goes with a few other players of Arsenal. Leno, for example, who's with Germany. That's something that needs to be sorted once he comes back from the Euros as well. So that's where we are with Granite Xhaka at the moment. Still no agreement between the clubs and Arsenal. You would think you know, a little bit of a stronger position when it comes to uh, arguing their case when it comes to the transfer fee with Roma. Um, Aston Villa just not going away are they another bid for Emil Smith Rowe rejected again for Arsenal this bid for 30 million the first one was for 25 I, d I don't understand this. this is a really odd one in terms of did Villa really expect £5 million pounds more was going to change Arsenal's stance to, for Emil Smith Rowe it was just never going to happen so it's just a really really strange one I know every club wants to get a player as cheap as possible a transfer target as cheap as possible but if you're Aston Villa and you really think there's an opportunity to get Emil Smith Rowe a th a raising your bid by five million after you've been firmly told he is not for sale is not going to suddenly make Arsenal think actually yeah no we'll, we'll do that. Just a really really weird offer. The the worry for Arsenal is you do what, what worry you know why are they getting the encouragement to come in with these bids right now? You know is this a big game to get Emil Smith Rowe a brand new contract, a, a bigger contract? Obviously you know those contract talks are going on. Arsenal still remain absolutely adamant that they are convinced that Emil Smith Rowe will sign his contract. And they're Roman absolutely adamant that he's not for sale, that this bid was rejected straight away and again reiterated that he is hands off. He is not a player Arsenal are going to sell this summer. It's just a situation that needs to get resolved. Arsenal need to get this contract sorted, signed, sealed, delivered for Emil Smith-Rowe to stop all this confusion from Aston Villa and any other interested clubs, because I'm sure there will be uh, in him. They just need to get it done. Honestly, today, Edu should be in his office Richard Garlick should be in the office at London Colney. They should be calling in Emil Smith Rowe. They should be calling in his agent and getting this deal done and dusted. Signed up. It should be an easy one to do. He's an Arsenal boy. Been here since he was seven or eight, however old it was. His friends are here, his mates are here. He's playing in the team with his mates. He's a vitally important part of the first team at 20 years old. This should not be a difficult deal to get done. Just get it signed. End this confusion, end the nerves that are beginning to creep in about why exactly Villarard making these bids for Emil Smith Rowe and get it sorted. Don't let it be a Bakaya Saka situation where you let it get down to the final year and then it really does begin to get it does begin to get nervous. So that's something Arsenal have got to sort out and they've got to sort it out quickly because the whole Villa thing is just adding a little bit of nervousness to a summer transfer window that really doesn't need to be here. Just got to get it done. It has to be a priority. They got Kieran Tierney done. Fair play. Credit to that. Now you've got to move on and get Emil Smith Rowe. This should have been done at the end of last season. You know, so the performances he put in should have been rewarded. Get it done. Signed as soon as that season's finished. Over with. There you go. There's your new five year five year contract. Off you go on holiday. Enjoy yourself and come back ready for the new season. It just feels like Arsenal have dallied a little bit on this one, and that's potentially why maybe um, the agents and behind the scenes are a little bit annoyed by it all, and that's why. There's sort of noises coming out about this whole Aston Villa stuff and maybe a little bit of encouragement is being given. Um, they've got to make Emil Smith-Rowe feel, feel wanted. And I'm sure they are, but he's got to be rewarded for his performances last season. Just finally, Daniel Ballard as well. A very talented young Arsenal centre-back was on loan at Blackpool last season. Did really well for them. Played a key role with them getting promoted to the Championship. He's now close to going out on loan again. He's going to be joining Millwall, barring any late... Um, sort of late hitches in that deal 
good move for him as well. I think he's going to be very, very popular down at the den. Big, powerful, towering centre-back. Old school almost. Um, just feels like a right fit for Millwall. Be really interesting to see how he develops in the Championship at the moment because he's maybe not... You know, he's developing a little bit late, you'd say, although centre-backs tend to develop later than than others. He's 22, Northern Ireland international. Um, you know, absolutely wasn't for sale this summer. So Arsenal have been very impressed at how he's got on at Blackpool. And um, yeah, hopefully he can go and have a really good season at the Den and then Arsenal make a decision about what to do with Daniel Ballard next season. But that's one to look out for in the next couple of days, perhaps Daniel Ballard joining Millwall on loan for the remainder of the season. All right, everyone, that's about it for today's video. Thank you very much for watching. If you are an England fan, you're watching this one in England today, please do enjoy the game tonight. Fingers crossed. Come on, England. Please don't let the Germans beat us again, especially at Wembley. And uh, yeah, enjoy the game. Enjoy what you're doing today. And I'll speak to you very, very soon.